Mayday call that Governor Wes Moore said ultimately ended up saving so many lives, preventing this situation, this tragedy, from being even worse because fortunately they were able to halt traffic on that bridge. The bridge opened up 47 years ago this week. 30,000 vehicles travel across it every single day, and now one of the most crucial uh, port channels, if you will, for the Port of Baltimore stands no more, and much of that traffic now going to be diverted into the tunnels and to the city itself. Still, so many unanswered questions, an investigation that is going to take months and months to get those answers and to find out exactly what happened here. My colleague Kelsey Kushner joins us now as our live team coverage continues at 11 o'clock. Kelsey. Rick, well, we know that those search and rescue efforts have been paused for the evening shortly before the sunset tonight. You know, Coast Guard saying that the conditions out here are just a little too dangerous for their divers. They pulled them out of the water tonight, but plan on putting their divers back in tomorrow morning starting at 6 a.m. We also know that the search and rescue has now turned into recovery efforts. Of course, Governor Moore saying tonight that is not the outcome we were hoping for. Dive teams raced against the clock for 18 hours, desperately searching for six victims in the murky, chilly waters of the Patapsco River after a cargo ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, finally calling off that search when conditions became too dangerous. The extensive search efforts that we put into it, the water temperature that at this point, we do not believe that we're going to find any of these individuals still alive. The massive cargo ship named Dolly was leaving the port of Baltimore around 1.30 Tuesday morning, headed to Sri Lanka, when crew members reported power outages and issues maintaining propulsion moments before crashing into a column. Within seconds, traffic was brought to a halt as the bridge collapsed into the river, sending eight construction workers who were filling potholes on the bridge overnight, plunging over 100 feet into 48 degree cold water. Only two of those workers were pulled out alive as operations were brought to a halt Tuesday night. It's a really heartbreaking um, conclusion to a challenging day. Uh, we, we put every single asset possible, uh, air, land and sea assets, to bring, um, to add to the members' survivability for these families. We're still fully committed to making sure that we are going to use every single asset to now bring a sense of closure to the families. The impact of the crash felt by neighbors miles away. Well, I was sleeping. About 1.30, I felt the vibration of the house vibrating and heard the big bang. NTSB is now leading the investigation, dispatching a 24-person team to look into the ship's records and examine what's left of the key bridge, a staple of Baltimore now left in pieces, some of its wreckage lying on top of the now stalled cargo ship. Both state leaders and the White House say their attention will now turn towards helping the victims' families heal and rebuilding what was once a gateway into Baltimore City. This is no ordinary bridge. This is one of the cathedrals of American infrastructure. It has been part of the skyline of this region for longer than many of us have been alive. So the path to normalcy will not be easy. It will not be quick. Now it is going to be a long road to recovery out here. As for the crew members who were on that cargo ship, we know there were 22 of them. They all are accounted for and are not injured. Reporting live tonight, Kelsey Kushner for WJC. All right, Kelsey, thank you. And your heart aches for the victims' families and what they're going through right now. We know these men came from overseas to Baltimore to give their families a better life. Men from Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, who came here to provide for their families, living right in the Baltimore and Dundalk community, and simply doing their job at 1.30 in the morning, filling potholes on the bridge when tragedy, the unthinkable, strikes. So again, we're finding out a little more about these. We know also one of those workers tonight identified as Miguel Luna, who has lived in Baltimore for quite some time. CASA gave us a statement. They put that out, shedding some more light on Miguel. And by this horrific accident. Sadly, we discovered that one of the construction workers involved was a longtime member of the Casa family, and Casa has identified that member as Miguel Luna of El Salvador, a husband, father of three, who has lived in Maryland for almost 20 years. Now, the other side of this, the local economy going to be crippled 
by this, with this channel being down in the port of Baltimore, not having vessels go in or out. Also, 30,000 cars daily drive over that bridge that stands no more. It is going to take a long, long time in terms of the impact this will have on the supply chain to get things right, moving in the right direction.